Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics. So, some of my Instagram followers tagged me in some posts of this person here that I'm gonna do a response video to now, which he calls himself Raw Bliss. The video I'm gonna be responding to is the carnival diet. The reason why I'm making this is not to hate on him at all. I'm actually really concerned about him, and so are the people that tagged me in his recent Instagram post. He thinks that everyone should be eating a fruitarian diet. It's the best diet for than possible. I used to believe this because I used to be a very dogmatic fruitarian years ago. It made me deteriorate and made me very skinny, weak, frail, and malnourished. So, as you'll see in this Instagram post, look how skinny, weak, and frail he is. His bones are showing so clearly, and he just doesn't look healthy at all. Looks like if he fell over, he would actually break himself. He reminds me of Jack Skeleton, not hating him at all, but it's just me being radically honest. And as you see here, he says things such as, this is me, real raw, vulnerable, and grateful where I am and how far I've come in this detoxification journey. Goes on about gaining weight back and doing things to start gaining weight back and strength such as calisthenics, yet doesn't look like he's regained any weight or strength back in my opinion. And saying various other things. If you wanna read the whole thing, I'll put a link down below. But if you look at the comments, people saying, you're literally dying of malnutrition, eating disorder, obviously. And there's just so many people here showing some concern. So hopefully this video gets to him and maybe he can listen to some of what I say because pretty much everyone else that's made responses, videos to him, such as Sean Baker, he made one. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link down below. He's never at a fruitarian diet. He's never been really skinny. So he doesn't really have experience with it, but I do. So let's get on to the video and respond accordingly. Hello everyone, this is Austin from Raw Bliss. I wanted to talk to you guys about this uh, carnivore diet. Carnivore. Now obviously, uh, it's scientifically proven that we are frugivores by nature. Uh, this is how our digestive system works. So first off the bat, he's saying that we are frugivores by design, and one of the reasons that he believes so is due to our digestive system. Yet. If you actually listen to someone that bases the information on real science, as I'm going to show you in a clip in a moment, you will see that we are not frugivores by design. So let's watch that clip, shall we? Many people, including so-called authorities who promote a plant-based diet, claim that the structure and function of our digestive tract is very similar to chimpanzees and other great apes. However, this illustration, drawn to scale, depicts the very significant difference between our gut and those of the great apes, including chimpanzees and gorillas. Evidently, a healthy human has a much smaller gut. The great apes have big guts and small brains, and we have big brains and small guts. In fact, our brain is about three times larger and our gut mass is about 40% smaller than expected for a primate of our size. In primates and all other mammals, both brain and gut mass are related to diet. Species that specialize in feeding on low energy density plant foods have relatively large, complex guts with either foregut or hindgut fermentation vats, along with small brains, and species that specialize in feeding on high energy density animal foods have relatively larger brains, but relatively smaller and simpler guts without capacious fermentation vats. We fit into the latter category. So as you see, there's some actual real scientific evidence that completely debunks that. So now let's move on to the rest of the video. This is how our teeth are designed. This is how our jaw is designed. Our eyes, we can see color. Meat eaters could not see color. We could see color so that we can see the fruits. Uh, in a field of green, we can pick them out. Uh, we have an amazing sense of smell, which meat eaters do not have. We <laughs> Is he actually joking me that we just have color sight? So that means due to having color sight that we are fruitarians, also known as frugivores by design, and carnivores do not have a good sense of 
smell. Is that true? An animal such as us humans, just because we can see color, means that we are frugivore by design. Well, let's look at the National Geographic website. So if you look at this article, it says humans have good color vision and some animals like jumping spiders can see even more hues than we can. If you don't know what hues are, that means color. But guess what? They don't eat fruit whatsoever. And then monarch butterflies, poison dark frogs and coral snakes are examples of toxic animals that spot warning colors, hues that would be predators, quickly learn and remember to avoid them. So something I want to add on to this is there was a neuroscientist known as Mark Changi Zee, and he has a book called The Vision Revolution. And he says that human eye evolved to see colors in part to glean what other person feels by detecting subtle color changes in their skin. He told Earth Sky this next specific thing. One of the most important things in our lives is other people's faces and the skin on their faces. The brain really cares about seeing the small differences. He also said that color changes that happen on our faces like blushing reveal a lot about people and that is another reason why we see with color. You can discern a lot about what's going on in their brains, what is their mood, what is their state, what is their current emotion. Now this one which is the most ridiculous one, he says that carnivores do not have a good sense of smell and us humans have better smell than them. Yet if I look on this event website and you scroll down, you will see that a cat's sense of smell is estimated to be about 14 times more sensitive than us. But that's nothing compared with a dog's powerful sniffer, which is thought to be 1,000 to 1 million times more powerful than a human nose. Man, this person seriously doesn't know what he's talking about at all. He's just placing it on all misinformation and dogmatic beliefs that's been projected onto him that he's just taken on from these untrustworthy raw food teachers. We don't have claws. We don't have teeth to shred raw skin and raw meat. Uh, yeah, we don't have claws to catch our prey. All these things are very simple, very uh, basic, observations you can make in nature. And yeah, he's saying it's just based on his observations, not fact at all. We might not have claws, but we as humans are different to all our other animals. We're very intelligent and we have been found hundreds of thousands of years ago to be making tools and weapons to actually end an animal's life and capture it because it's also very smart and we're able to do that. And also, I've it raw meat and I can easily eat it and shred it with my teeth. So what he's saying again is just absolute garbage. Every animal in nature eats their food in a raw, natural state. Now we look at the foods, all the foods that humans eat, what is the most natural and nutrient dense and satisfying in its raw natural state. What does it require us to veer from our design? What does it require cooking? And you look at fruits, which are the reproductive organs of a fruit tree, of the plant. The plant wants to reproduce and it can't do so without certain animals like birds, humans, orangutans, who disperse seeds. So again, all these ideologies and just all of these beliefs that don't actually make any sense whatsoever. Yes, pretty much every animal in nature eats raw food in its raw natural state. And so have we many times when we used to live in our natural environment. There's a lot of people that eat a raw carnivore diet and they have no issues with that whatsoever. But guess what? We evolved over time and it's been shown a very, very long time ago that we started creating fire and cooking food as I'm going to show you now. So again, it's some scientific evidence by Science Daily and I'm just gonna read out the summary of this. So as you can see, the title is the evidence that human ancestors use fire one million years ago. The summary goes on to say that scientists have identified the earliest known evidence of the use of fire by human ancestors 
Microscopic traces of wood ash alongside animal bones and stone tools were found in a layer dated to 1 million years ago at the Wamwork Cave in South Africa. And what a lot of people are gonna say, well, it could just be a bushfire that caused that or some other natural cause. Humans wouldn't have done that whatsoever. But if you look here, it says analysis of sediment by lead authors Francesco Berner and Paul Goldberg of Boston University revealed ashed plant remains and burned bone fragments, both of which appear to have been burned locally rather than carried into the cave by wind or water. The researchers also found extensive evidence of surface discoloration that is typical of burning. And then what a lot of people say is, well, if you actually do some further research into this, they didn't find any tools or cookware, but to be honest, all you need is a stick or something else that you don't need to make whatsoever to cook the meat and other foods over a fire. So he also said, what is a food in its raw and natural state that is satisfying and nutrient dense? And he's saying that people don't eat raw meat. So I was gonna show you this. It talks about the Tundra Ninets, which is an indigenous group of people in Southern Siberia. And if you actually look in to their diet, they eat things such as raw reindeer meat and other meat without any issues whatsoever. And now I wanna go on to the nutrient density side of thing. So someone covered it on this article. So what you see in this is to induce from chronometer. And at the top is comparing five pounds of fruit to just 113 grams of beef liver. And look at the nutrient density. The beef liver has less calories, more protein, which is good because you need it for neurotransmitter production, muscle building, which obviously he needs definitely more protein. You have, as you can see, as you can see with his physique earlier on, it's low in carbohydrates, which is really a good. It's got a good amount of fats. It's got slightly more fat than the five pounds of fruit. And it's got 60% of the total vitamins that we need. The fruit has 73%. So as you can see, it's not far off the vitamin content of the fruit, the liver that is. And the minerals is 44% for the liver and 50% for the fruit. And guess what? The liver has things in such as B12 and cholesterol, which cholesterol is a precursor for all other hormones within the body and a whole host of other nutrients that the fruit will never give you. So as you can see, it's a nutrient powerhouse and you can eat it in your raw state. That is completely incorrect. The fruit can fall on the floor, break down over a period of time and it will reproduce. It does not need a human or other animals to do so. So when you eat fruits, uh, you're actually getting hormone rich <laughs> sexual organs. They're filled with hormones. Oh my God, this is ridiculous. It's full of hormones. What hormones? They ain't got no testosterone in it. Progesterone, pregnenolone, DHT, progesterone, any hormones whatsoever. What are you talking about? That is absolute craziness. And if it was full of hormones, your physique wouldn't look so skinny, weak and frail. And you would just be absolutely thriving and have an optimal amount of body fat and muscle naturally like come on man where did you get that from i've never heard any raw food preacher talk about that before and that's why you get like this dopamine rush and this is how the fruit tree tells us to disperse the seed to keep the line going you know like keep its ancestry alive what to keep its ancestry alive it gives you dopamine rush it gives you a dopamine rush due to all of the naturally occurring sugars in it. Which would happen if you consumed white sugar, but it doesn't mean the white sugar wants you to eat it. So it can be this reproductive organ symbiotic process with us and the sugar so it can reproduce. Uh, survival of the fittest. So it gives us this dopamine hit. We disperse the seed. And this is the symbiotic relationship that exists between humans and trees. And we've been destroying the trees for so long, and that's why we are suffering. 
No, we're not suffering because the trees are being destroyed. It's because we're living in a very unnatural environment with electromagnetic frequencies. Our food is sprayed with pesticide. The water is tainted. There is pollution in the air and so on. Because we have this relationship with the trees. <clears throat> so yeah, there is no carnivore human being. We are frugivores. Uh, there may be frugivores who eat meat which uh, is just a confused frugivore. We are frugivores by scientific fact, by design. Uh, a carnivore, for example, would be a cat, a lion, uh, a tiger, you know? Uh, an example of a frugivore would be an orangutan, uh, many species of birds, uh, chimpanzees, so if we look into chimpanzees and orangutans, let's first look at how much of DNA match to us and let's see if they eat meat at all. As it says here, orangutans and humans share 97% of DNA. This article, which I'll just quickly read, it says there is some findings of them eating meat from other animals at times, but it is very, very rare. But also a lot of their diet is insects and also mostly termites and ants. Yet he's saying they're a fruit for, yet a lot of what they eat isn't actually fruit at all. And then if we look at chimps DNA, oh actually, they're actually way closer to us. So that would be more of a better comparison. 99% similar DNA to humans. And oh wait, a male chimpanzee feeds on red colobus monkey in national park. And then if you read this whole article, it says chimps eat baby monkeys brains first, a clue to human evolution. So it says here that they have a witness that chimps survey their prey and the hunt begins. And they're screaming at the chimps and so on. And yeah, as the article says that yes, they do eat meat and on quite a regular basis. So if they're eating it, why are we not necessarily designed to eat? It would make sense if they're 99% similar DNA. It doesn't necessarily mean we only eat meat just like them. But yeah, we definitely don't just eat 100% fruit just like the chimpanzees do not. You know? And orangutans, we share 95% of our DNA with. Actually, no, 97%. You got that wrong, as I just proved a minute ago. So you look at... Orangutans, they live in the tropics. They live in Borneo, where they're where they have access to over a hundred, uh, more than that, over hundreds of types of fruits. On average, the orangutan eats 10, 20 different fruits in a day. And he eats loads of green leafy vegetables, termites, and ants, and other insects as well. Stuff that you need to be eating in, in occasions. Eats meat as well. It's a lot of variety, like there's tens of thousands of raw plant foods in the world that you can eat. And people think this is a limiting diet. It is a limited diet. Just because there's a variety of different fruits doesn't mean it's a limited diet. You're only in a specific group of foods, which are fruits specifically, which guess what? They're very low in amino acids. They don't have collagen, elastin, cholesterol, creatine, and so many other different things to give us the most optimal state of health and just make us feel the best possible and optimize our longevity. And also a massive thing that he's definitely lacking out, and this is why his mind's not working so well, is fruits are a really rubbish source of essential fatty acids. They're called essential for a reason because we cannot produce them ourselves. And animal foods are one of the best sources to get those much needed essential fatty acids. There's nothing limiting about a raw food diet. In fact, most people that eat cooked food eat the same five things. They eat like rice, meat, vegetables. No, most people in the world eat so much garbage processed foods and meat and grains and beans and legumes and seeds and vegetables and fruits and so on. So just, that doesn't make any sense at all. That's a restricting diet. You need to get the rainbow. You need to eat the rainbow. 
it feeds your whole energy system because we are light beings. <laughs> oh, he's going into all that hocus pocus, spiritual woo woo stuff. I'm a spiritual person, but this is just absolutely ridiculous. Is this one of your reasons that you believe that is the best diet for humans? <laughs> we need to eat light. And when you eat death, you're gonna die faster. You're gonna embody that which you eat. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. Again, it's just a belief that's not based on truth whatsoever. Look at people in the blue zones. They're the longest living people in the world and they all eat meat in their diets. So just remember that the next time you reach for that, uh, that cooked, you know, that McDonald's, that cooked steak, that uh, that dead animal, that uh, chicken period, you know, whatever it is, and uh, yeah, so that's it for today's video. Yeah, it's got so many nutrients, even if you're cooking it, it's still very nutrient rich and nutrient dense that are giving us nutrients that are absolutely essential to thrive that a fruit based diet cannot give you. Just a little rant for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe for more. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace and love, as always. <laughs> and it's funny, if you actually look at the video, which will be linked down below, it has so many dislikes and almost no likes because a lot of people see him through his lies. So yeah, make sure he becomes aware of this and don't forget to leave your questions, likes, down below as well if you like the video share so others and don't forget to subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis and if you'd like me to make a response video to anyone specifically let me know down below and i'll make it for you as soon as possible peace